Welcome everyone to our seven day detox devotional. We are so glad that you're listening in today. Today we're gonna talk about detoxing our bodies. This is an important topic and I'm looking forward to jumping in. You know, the Bible repeatedly talks about our bodies. In Genesis, we hear a description of how God created our bodies from the dust. In Proverbs, we have all kinds of instructions on how to live a healthy life and have healthy bodies. And those instructions are, inc are increased on and built upon in the New Testament, where we see God give us also some incredible promises about what he intends to do with our bodies when Jesus comes back. God has given us some very clear instruction about our bodies. And a few of them apply directly to what we're doing this week, detoxing. So the first and primary way that we can detox is to purify our bodies of all that contaminates. 2 Corinthians 7.1 says, Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. The promises this Bible verse is referring to is God's promise to make his home with us, to live with us, to be our father. But there's an important requirement that comes with this promise, and that's for us to live holy lives, free from anything that contaminates our body or our spirit. There are many things that contaminate our body and spirit, but we're just gonna focus on three major sources of contamination for our bodies, alcohol, drugs, and sexual immorality. Let's start with sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20 says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Powerful scripture. But I wanna be very clear on this point. Sexual immorality has no place in the life of a Christian. This isn't something that we should need to detox our life from because we should have left this sin behind when we committed our life to Christ. When I came to Christ, I was totally confused about sex. I was in a sexual relationship with my girlfriend. I'd convinced myself that as long as I was only having sex with one person, that I was okay, that I was being faithful to them and to the Bible. I was wrong. I had drawn some arbitrary lines in my life because they suited me, because it fit my choices and it made me feel good about what I was doing. But the fact remains that those lines i drawn didn't save me from the consequences of sexual immorality. And I have a string of past, painful, broken relationships to prove it. Maybe you were born gay. Maybe you were raised to believe that being a man meant sleeping with as many women as possible. Maybe you convinced yourself that as long as you were only sleeping with one person, like I had, that you were all right. Or maybe you believed the lie that you should find out if you were sexually compatible before you got married. Whatever the source, one fact remains. Sex is meant for the confines of marriage between one man and one woman. Anything apart from that is immoral. And the Bible makes it clear that it will cost you, especially when it comes to your body. Sexual immorality is a contaminant that prevents the Holy Spirit from fully abiding or living in our life. We must flee from this sin against our bodies, get rid of all sexual immorality immediately. Another contaminant that we need to detox from our body is alcohol. Ephesians 5.18 says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity, but be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. I know many Christians who like to spend time arguing about whether we should drink alcohol or not. I'm not here to debate that. Let's just take a look at this verse. It says clearly, getting drunk with wine is wickedness, corruption, and stupidity. It's also important to note that this verse makes it clear that we can choose one of two options, getting drunk or being filled with the Holy Spirit. These are mutually exclusive. You can't have both. Either you choose to get drunk or you choose to be filled with the Spirit. Alcohol is something we need to purify our lives from if we want to experience God's presence and indwelling in our lives. The third thing that we need to get rid of is drugs. 1 John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust and sensual craving of the flesh, and the lust and the longing of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's own resources 
or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. Now, this verse doesn't specifically identify drugs, but it does talk about the lust and sensual cravings of our body and the longing of our eyes. As a former drug abuser myself, this resonates with me. There have been far too many mornings in my life when I knew mentally, spiritually, emotionally that those drugs were draining me of life, but my body craved them and would not let me quit. Drugs, whether that's cigarettes, heroin, cocaine, pills, marijuana, anything that your body craves when absent needs to be cut out. If it alters our state of mind, affects our emotions or mood, or dictates how we respond to those around us, let's detox that from our bodies. So the first way that we can detox our bodies is to purify it of all contaminants. Today, we're talking about sexual morality, alcohol, and drugs. Those things need to go. The second way we can detox our bodies is to fast, to abstain from food. Now, whenever our church declares a corporate fast, I a time of abstaining from food together, I wrestle. In 2009, just about a year after I started full-time ministry, I went through a very difficult year. One of the biggest blows I took that year was being diagnosed with diabetes. With the exception of my aging grandfather who had some blood sugar issues late in life, no one in my family had ever dealt with this before and I had no idea how life altering that diagnosis would be. More than 11 years later, the reality of battling this disease has become a part of my everyday life. There's literally never a meal, a snack, or even a beverage that I consume without thinking about the consequences. What will this do to my blood sugar? How much insulin will I have to take to stay at the right level? Can I afford to eat this? It's a task that often feels like it will never end. And as a task-oriented person, sometimes it drives me a little crazy. So when we declare a corporate fast, as we've done this week, I, have, I immediately ask myself a lot of questions. What will happen to my blood sugar? What should I do with the insulin I've been taking? Can I do what everybody else is going to be doing? Should I allow myself to make adjustments or exceptions for this disease? I know I'm not the only one who's confronted with a lot of questions when it comes to fasting, but I want you to take note of something. I'm not asking whether I'm going to fast. I'm asking God what I can fast. All of us, whether you're diabetic, struggling with high blood pressure, or battling cancer, can fast something. This seven-day detox is one, has one of my all-time favorite ways to participate in a fast, built right in. Fasting movies, TV shows, and social media. No matter what your health struggle, you can do that and you should. As to fasting food, I always try to choose something that I know will be difficult for me, but won't land me in a hospital bed. Notice that I'm not choosing something that makes me feel great. I still choose to fast in a way that causes a confrontation with my body. Which brings me to two important things to keep in mind when we talk about fasting food. First, fasting is not for God. Psalm 51.16 says it very simply, offerings and sacrifices are not what you want. Newsflash, our big sacrifice, choosing to eat only one meal a day for seven days, really doesn't impress God. What? It doesn't impress God? Then why are we doing it? Well, that brings me to point number two. Fasting is for us. We are fasting for ourselves. We are fasting to bring our hearts into alignment with God, and that is what he wants. He's after our hearts. There are two ways that fasting can realign our hearts and bring us closer to God. First, fasting brings us into confrontation with our bodies. Romans 6.16 says, Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. In this detox, one of the primary reasons we abstain from food is to reestablish control of our bodies. When our stomach tells us that it's hungry, we treat it as a call to prayer instead of allowing that impulse to dictate our next action. When we feel faint from hunger, we treat it as an opportunity to rely on God's strength instead of our own. When our body demands obedience from us, obedience to its impulses, we say, no, you're not the boss of me. 1 Corinthians 9.27 says it this way, No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. 
Fasting is a blow to our body. It's a battle line drawn in the sand. It's a choice to subjugate our body's needs to our spiritual needs, to make it clear that our master is not the flesh, but the spirit. I mentioned my battle with diabetes earlier, and of course, one of the major struggles when it comes to this disease is how demanding it becomes on your time and your energy. As I said, it's a balancing act that means my body requires a lot of care and attention. In 2009, when I was diagnosed, I wasn't very healthy, and I learned the hard way that different foods would do different things to my body. I also learned the value of a long walk. I'd already been walking to some extent every morning because I'd committed myself to one hour of prayer every day. I chose to walk not necessarily because I wanted to be physically healthier, but because I wanted to get away from home and work to find some alone time with Jesus. Making that first initial commitment was one of the best decisions of my life. Sure, part of it was because I could see the physical benefits of walking every day, but more important than that, I was drawing closer to God. Today, I start every day, rain or shine, with a walk of 45 minutes or longer. There are many days when I wake up tired, I go for a walk anyway. There are, many, there are more than a few days where I don't feel like praying, I go for a walk anyway. There are days when I have to get up before 4 a.m. in order to get my walk in with Jesus, and I do it every time without fail. Why would I do that? Why do I choose to live this disciplined life? Because I've found a friend that I want to spend every day of my life with. And I know that if I don't spend that time with him each morning, I'll find myself more weary, not less. I need that time to bring my impatient, scattered thoughts into alignment with his peace and his patience. I need that time to remind myself of who is really in control of my life. And I can say this with confidence. The discipline I live by today began with fasting. Having those fasting confrontations with my flesh is what allows me to get up every day and say, body, you're not the boss of me. I've got an appointment with Jesus. Which brings me to my final point of what fasting can do. Fasting reminds us of what's important. Job 23, 12 says, I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. If all you do on this seven day detox is decontaminate your body and abstain from food for a few days, your body will definitely be a lot healthier. But there's a big difference between a diet and a fast, and that's seeking God. Don't just stop eating. Make some time to treasure his word. Don't just stop scrolling through your social media feed. Take that time to listen to some worship music that reminds you of how good God really is. Don't just get rid of the alcohol or drugs or sexual immorality, but make a commitment to seek God every day until those things have no power over your life ever again. We can do this. We can detox our bodies and find ourselves closer to God than we ever thought possible. I wanna encourage you, decontaminate your life, abstain from food for a while and see if God doesn't change you forever. God bless you.